Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Gabriel Grill, and uh, I will talk today about uh, scalable data analysis with Spark. Okay, uh, first off, I would like to start with a small questionnaire. So, uh, who here has experience with Java or Python? Please raise your hands. Okay, a lot of people. Um, who has experience with Scala? Okay, also some. Um, who has actually worked with big data here? Okay, two persons. <laughs> and uh, how many people uh, heard of Spark or are using it actually? Okay, oh, also a couple of people. Okay, so, um, so this will be an introductory talk and I will start by um, explaining a bit uh, on, on MapReduce. Uh, then I will uh, tell you uh, why Spark, why I'm doing this talk on Spark. Then I will give you a short introduction to Spark and, and with some examples in a demo. Okay. So uh, MapReduce is a very famous programming model for big data. It has been developed, uh, in, in, uh, um, invented by Google uh, in 2004. Uh, it's sort of the industry standard for uh, big data analytics. Uh, for ha it has been for a decade, so to say, and there's a very popular op uh, open source implementation called Hadoop. Um, the um, data is stored in uh, the Hadoop file system, as, um, and there are uh, two functions which you need to implement, which are the map and reduce function, to actually build programs. Um, this uh, makes um, building big data applications really easy, because this is actually really complicated when you have su such many nodes. Okay, so uh, the map function uh, applies a function to each element, and afterwards there is a, a shuffle, where um, uh, um, uh, the, the elements are sorted according because uh, uh, key value pairs are are, um, uh, uh, are the result of this map function and they are then uh, so sorted according to um, their keys and then distributed to uh, nodes and then there's a reduce function which aggregates uh, the values according to keys and the result is then stored on HDFS. Okay, so uh, here's sort of the standard big data example of map reduce word count. Uh, first, we start with uh, input, as you can see this um, uh, text. Then there's this map function. This map function um, 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 gets each line and um, uh, returns uh, key value pairs. The key is uh, a word in, in, in the example and the value are ones. The goal is sort of to count all unique words. Then we have a shuffle and sort phase where uh, the nodes uh, get uh, key value pairs according to keys. So as we can see, uh, all the deaths are on the node above and all the quick, which is only one, is in the reduce. Um, the reduce gets then these pairs and accumulates them and uh, we get this result where we have three times the word de, two times the word brown. Okay. So, um, but um, bec um, it's, uh, Hadoop has been developed in 2004, so a lot has changed until uh, till then. Um, hardware has gone better, um, the bandwidth uh, has increased, um, and uh, main memories are, has, have also become cheaper and bigger. Um, so it would be nice to use, it, use this more. Also, um, Hadoop applications um, tend to get complex uh, for our more difficult tasks because uh, you only have a map and a reduce function to implement, which uh, doesn't give you that much uh, uh, to play with. And um, there's this problem um, with iterative computing, because after each uh, map reduce phase, um, all the results are stored on disk, on this Hadoop file system. And in machine learning, for instance, uh, we often want to um, have multiple iterations to improve our results, and then we need to fetch each time from the file systems the results, and this of course is slower. And uh, it's also not uh, slow for interactive querying because the startup time is uh, not that great. And also in, in, in standalone mode, uh, it's also not that great. So um, yeah, there's been a next generation sort of of uh, big data tools for querying, and I'm going to talk about Spark today. So. Um, it's, uh, of course, a general engine for uh, large-scale digital processing like Hadoop. It's written in Scala, and since 2013, it's an Apache project. Usually, it actually comes from academia, from MPLAB, from Berkeley, but now it's an Apache project. Um, and it's also uh, a lot of companies already use it. 
Um, so, um, um, uh, what has improved is uh, uh, with, with Spark is uh, efficiency in a way, because uh, in memory, uh, uh, the 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 in memory result in dis distributed uh, the because because we use um, our, our our RAMs. Um, useful. We, we, ex we exploit it. Because um, um, uh, in, in, um, in Spark, um, we, um, um, the um, tasks are sent to nodes, and then um, there's processing happening on these nodes um, with data stored in memory. And we can keep this data in memory across multiple uh, iterations through caching. And this, of course, uh, leads to uh, as you can see, outrageous uh, performance improvements in some cases, up to 100 times faster for uh, logistic reg reg than Hadoop for uh, some logistic regression uh, applications. Um, then there are the general execution graphs in Spark can also be more complex, which gives us more potential for optimizations. Um, it's also a benefit to Hadoop. Then uh, what's also nice, we have uh, uh, an interpreter a shell, so to say, which uh, gives us the possibility to uh, low latency data exploration. Um, the API is also uh, on a higher level than MapReduce. We have uh, a lot of different uh, functions from uh, which uh, m uh, many people know from functional programming, and um, the API is also available for Java, <coughs> Scala, and Python, as well as the shell is also available in Scala and Python. And um, it runs on; it, it can run on top of the uh, Hadoop file system which uh, makes it really in e easily integratable in uh, already existing uh, big data uh, systems. Um, the um, persistence is also, there's also a nice mechanism for fault tolerance built into it. I will go into detail about that later. So um, Spark also has a really nice ecosystem. There is a streaming library for online algorithms. Then you have uh, Spark SQL, which uh, uh, allows you to um, do querying on the data really easily. Then there's MLIP with a lot of nice machine learning uh, 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 algorithms like uh, clustering, um, <coughs> classification, uh, statistical tests, etc. And you can also access these functions in uh, Spark SQL. Um, so um, you can, on, on a really na abstract level, um, look at your data really fast and really easy. And then you have graphics, which is a collection of graph algorithms, uh, which is really nice because uh, we live in a time where um, social graphs are sort of everywhere. So um, you also need to do this efficiently. And then there's Spark R for the math people here, um, where you have uh, a DSL for, for R. Um, on the bottom of Spark, you can you have, can have the, HDFL, the Hadoop file system, and then um, sort of uh, different uh, uh, tools on top of it, like Cassandra, for instance, which is a NoSQL database. Then you have, uh, or a document uh, database. Then you have, uh, can have uh, um, um, cluster managers. That you can either have, uh, use the standalone Spark cluster manager or use Yarn or Mesos. Then you can have, uh, for instance, a Hadoop, an MPI, and a Spark uh, running in the same cluster. We even use Mesos. So that's pretty nice. Um, and uh, it's gotten a lot of attention recently. And um, in Spark Submit in June, um, it, uh, they actually sh uh, showed that it's now the um, most active Apache Big Data project. Um, so yeah, community is really going up there really fast. Uh, okay, so now uh, um, we'll talk a bit about how Spark works. So sort of the uh, most important thing about Spark are these RDDs. Um, they are uh, resilient distributed data sets. They're sort of a uh, collection uh, of objects which are distributed across the cluster. They are immutable. Uh, they can be cached in memories. And um, they are rebuilt on failure. Um, you can uh, sort of invoke operations on them. I will talk about what kind of operation are available later. And there exists multiple types of these RDDs. You have uh, your pair RDDs, which are similar to like the key value pairs which you have in uh, Hadoop. Um, then you have for, uh, one for uh, double values. Uh, and you can also define your own custom RDDs to uh, uh, have your data encapsulated. OK, so um, these operations, uh, 
which, which you invoke on, on these RDDs are run in parallel. And there are two, ki two kinds. There are transformations, where you uh, get an RDD and transform it into a new RDD. The important thing here is to know that this is done lazy. So uh, this means um, computation is not done immediately. It, computation is invoked uh, when you actually need a value, if you call, uh, uh, call an action, uh, so to say. An action um, takes an RDD and returns a value. I will show this feature of laziness later in the demo, more better. Okay, so uh, now let's have a look at the architecture. So uh, on top we have the Spark driver, which is our main function, so to say. Um, this needs a Spark context, which is sort of the connection to the cluster. I use the Spark context to um, create RDDs uh, and uh, shared variables. Then um, the, the Spark driver um, sends jobs and tasks sort of to the cluster manager, which then uh, distributes them to the Spark workers, which have caches. Um, each application which I start has its own executor, and in these executors I have multiple threads which execute tasks. And um, they use uh, HDFS uh, off top uh, on uh, below is used for uh, um, getting the data, usually. Okay, so now let's start with some examples. Um, this is word count in Hadoop. It has uh, um, 63 lines, and uh, here's the Spark version. As you can see, actually it's just sort of three lines. The first, uh, uh, the, the actual algorithm is three lines and uh, the first and the last line are sort of only um, fetching the data. Okay, now I will um, uh, do a shell, uh, show you something in, in the shell. Okay, so this is uh, sort of uh, the Spark shell. As we can see, uh, we've got a Spark context instantly available that's pre-configured in the shell, which is really nice. So what we're going to do is now define a variable, uh, which um, uh, uh, which gets an RDD from uh, disk. As we can see, these RDDs of uh, type string uh, is the variable name, and um, so far everything is done lazy. So so far nothing has really happened. So uh, for something to actually happen, we need to invoke an action. So let's uh, maybe see how many lines we have in this file. So it's uh, about 500,000 tweets in there. Let's maybe have a look at the first tweet. Okay, <coughs> going to skip. Um, <laughs> maybe later. Um, okay, now um, let's do something more fun and uh, filter out some tweets. Um, we have uh, here our text variable, and we call a function filter, and we, this function filter, we pass a function which um, uh, filters out um, lines uh, which are don't contain a hashtag. So, okay, again, it's done lazily, so uh, nothing really happens. This time we're going to cache everything. Still nothing happens. Um, the uh, values are cached after first invocation, uh, uh, only after the first invocation. So um, if we do now a count to see how many tweets we have now, it's now less. It took us about uh, 0 0.2 seconds. Now let's try to invoke it again. And as you can see, big improvement. Now uh, we have now 0 0.01 seconds after the caching. Okay. Um, so uh, let's do something different. Um, let's um, uh, get the length of the word, uh, get, get the amount of words which we have in each tweet. Um, we, look at, we use again the filtered tweets and we call a, a map function on it. We pass it uh, an anonymous function. First we split the words, uh, we, we split the lines into uh, words, and then we uh, count the amounts. Again, nothing happens because it's lazy. Because um, we're going to use this a couple of times, we are going to cache it. And uh, next thing we do, we are going to calculate the 
amount of um, uh, the, the total amount of words which we have in all the filter tweets, which is uh, about 900,000. And uh, now we're going to use this and divide, divide it by the uh, amount of uh, tweets we have. And so uh, now we see we have about uh, 11 words per tweet in our filter tweets with hashtags. Um, Okay, um, so the last example will be now the, um, the word count. This time, ah, we're going to do a flat map. And again, split up the lines. Um, why do we have to do here flat map? Because if we do uh, only a normal map, we get an array of strings because uh, each, uh, each map uh, returns, uh, returns uh, an array of all the words in the line. And here, as you can see, we've got, we have an RDD of type string. Uh, this flat map sort of concatenates all our arrays. Okay, um, next thing we need is the word pairs. I again do a map. And as in MapReduce, we um, have here our key and here our value. And now we're going to calculate the word counts. With our first, with our third call. Um, this will be a reduce by key. Um, this function sort of um, uh, shuffles uh, all these uh, tuples we have here and um, distributes them uh, to the uh, nodes and then uh, reduces called there with the values. Okay, um, so now um, if we do now, um, let's first ca cache it again. Because we want to use it a couple of times. Um, so now if we um, count this, we get the number of uh, unique words which we have. This takes some time because we have uh, had a couple of uh, transformations this time. So it's uh, about one million unique words. Let's maybe have a look how the data actually, uh, how, how these pairs actually look like, which we get. These are sort of uh, 10 random pairs, sort of. Um, yeah, and as we can see, it sort of works. We have here three times the word, all that. But what maybe interests us is to see uh, which words are sort of the most used ones. So we're going to uh, do a map and uh, swap uh, the key and the value so we can sort by the number and uh, call the sort by key function and take again 10. And so we see, yeah, okay. The word which is most used is RT for retweet. Yeah. <laughs> then we have uh, A, I, to the Okay, it's also interestingly pretty high. Okay, so here we also have uh, the, c c we can see all tasks and jobs which we executed really nicely. Um, yeah, have a, you can have a closer look at that if, when you try out Spark maybe. Okay, so um, that's it. Are there any questions? Yeah, I was running it in standalone mode on my local machine. Um, I um, actually um, used it uh, in um, Microsoft uh, Azure environment myself with, uh, I think, 10 nodes. So that's sort of my experience, but I couldn't use it uh, for this demo here. It was just easier. And also you can see, you can try this. It's just, it's, uh, it exists as, uh, in many distributions also as a package, so you can just install it and then uh, start up a shell and maybe try some stuff out. And because there's also a Python interpreter in there, you can also do Python. And um, yeah, the Java version is also uh, has, has lot, a lot simpler than Hadoop, I would say. Um, yeah? Yeah, 
yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah th that's sort of the benefit. Yeah, because because you can keep it in main memory and you don't have to read from disk all the time. The, the main benefit. Uh, any more questions? Okay then, uh, thanks, and uh, yeah, have a nice day and enjoy the death fest. <laughs>